This is the complete history of communism, part five, communism in North Korea. Korea is a mid-sized land, surrounded by China and Russia and Japan. A humble nation surrounded by three mighty forces. Long ago it was known as the Hermit Kingdom. Isolated from the world but self-sufficient, Korea had its own language and inventions and resources. But when the rest of the world reached colonial times, Europe and Japan both wanted that colonial prize. East and West wanted Korea. Who would win? Japan annexed Korea in 1910, and life under the Japanese was cruel, but Korean landlords and police helped them to rule. The richest Koreans and the vicious imperialists collaborated. The first Korean communist was a woman, Alexandra Kim. She lived in Russia, but a few Koreans joined in. Maybe communism could get rid of the Japanese conquerors most Koreans hated. The Korean Communist Party was just a few people at best. One was Kim Song-ju, a teenage student who got arrested. When he got out, he fled and joined Mao's army. He fought in China, not Korea, but he fought the Japanese. And a legend spread back in Korea about a Korean army commander fighting in China. Kim Il-sung, meaning become the sun, became the new name of this star. And when Kim was the last commander alive in his section, and the Japanese had his troops down to a fraction, he led his last men to safety across a river to the USSR. So the next chapter in Kim Il-sung's life began. He left Mao's army and was retrained as a Soviet army man. He fought in Stalin's army through World War II, and when Japan was crushed, it was Korea's dream come true. But like Germany after the Nazis were finished, Korea was also in question with the Japanese banished. Would it be the communist East or the capitalist West that would give it direction? So just like East and West Germany, a similar decision fell to cut Korea in half along the 38th parallel, the North to Stalin's Russia, the South to America's protection. Stalin picked Kim Il-sung to be leader in the North, Sigmund Rhee was the South's leader America put forth, and through the late 40s was a propaganda fight, both called the other a puppet, and both were sort of right. Well, one big problem with North Korea, to be fair, was there were very few Korean communists even there. The leaders were mostly foreigners from China and the Soviet Union. Then one big problem with South Korea, to be fair, was America put back in power all the rich Koreans there. All those buns who collaborated with Japan came right back to rule them. Another irony is Korea had its own communist party, but it was based in the South. Riches couldn't get things started. Meanwhile, both leaders were like pawns hoping to be kings. Both wanted to conquer the other and rule everything. 1950, Kim got Stalin's permission and sent the North Korean troops across the border on a conquering mission. The South Koreans fled like Kim hoped would happen. But Kim underestimated how much America was committed. He thought the U.S. wouldn't send troops to Korea, but we did. So it was Kim's turn to flee because it was our excuse to see him flattened. But then it was America's turn for a disastrous turnabout. We hadn't thought the giant Chinese army would come out. So the Korean War was really Americans versus Chinese, with Korea in the crossfire of this mini World War III. Well, we reinforced with new technologies like napalm, but the Chinese seemed endless. There was even talk of using an A-bomb. And for three horrible years, there was slaughter and nobody winning. Then America and China both backed off because they were even. But with millions dead and cities destroyed for no reason, Korea ended up divided just the same as at the war's beginning. Kim still wanted more power, but still needed Russia and China's help. The only rivals he could get rid of were Korean communists themselves. Then he told everyone to believe in Juche, his philosophy of self-reliance. And he did improve North Korea's economy and science. So North Korea prospered for a time, but by the 70s was in decline. Old Kim picked his son, Kim Jong-il, to lead in his departure. North Korea even started nuclear power programs, but the economy just kept slowing and slowing. And when the Soviet Union collapsed, North Korea most lost its most important partner. Unlike a metaphor for the growing problems in his past, old Kim had a neck tumor that they cropped from photographs. In fact, it got so big it got in fistfights with his kid. Okay, that didn't really happen, but it would have been crazy if it did. Now North Korea is a hermit kingdom again, ruled by Kim Jong-il and his army men. Isolated from the world, but even worse than in the past. But if North Korea continues to get rid of its nuclear programs tomorrow, it can still be an example for the rest of the world to follow. Maybe trade sanctions will lift and the people will rise and make their own fate at last. That was great.